Hi, today I'm going to read to you guys Mountain Chef. It's how one man lost his groceries, changed his plans, and he actually helped cook up the National Park Service. This is a story I wanted to read to you guys before, but it, it was too long, so it wouldn't take. Now, this is a really cool book because it's actually signed by the illustrator. Okay, and the illustrator is Rich Lowe. And the author is Annette Bay Pamanel. So let's find out what happened. Tai Singh, he was a frontier boy born high in the mountains of Virginia City, Nevada. Growing up, he breathed crisp Sierra air and he scuffed through sagebrush and he learned to write in both English and Chinese. Now, America was tough place to be Chinese. Bosses paid Chinese workers less than white workers and townsfolk. They spat out Chinese names like, well, like they'd swallowed river gravel. Now, most people with Chinese names ended up cooking in restaurants or washing clothes and laundries. Tai Singh, though, had American dirt underneath his fingernails, and he had dreams as big as the country that he loved. Cramped shacks weren't for him. He made plans. Tai Singh made big plans. Now he got a job cooking for map makers as they tramped through the mountains naming peaks. With sky for his ceiling and sequoias for his walls, he stirred silky sauces, boiled, broiled succulent steaks, and tossed crisp salads. In his sheet metal oven, he baked sourdough rolls as light as the clouds drifting above the peaks. His reputation grew and the, as the best trail cook in all of California. Wow. Now in 1915, that's over 100 years ago, Tai Singh got his most important job yet. A millionaire named Stephen Mather was trying to convince lawmakers to create a National Park Service to protect the country's national wonders. But in the city, the roar of business drowned out his talk of mountains and trees and animals. So Mather invited writers, tycoons, members of Congress, and even a movie star to go camping. Doesn't that sound like fun to go camping? Well, he wanted to show his guests the majesty of America's wild places, but he worried. Boy, give a man a poor breakfast after he's had a bad night's sleep, and he will not care how fine your scenery is. So, he bought the best camping gear he could find, newfangled air mattresses for soft and dreamy sleep, and he hired the best trail cook around, Tai Singh. There he is. Look at that. Now, Tai Singh, he planned and he mulled over menus for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He had to serve 30 people every day for 10 days in the wilderness. Lionized potatoes, peaches and cream, frog's legs, English plum pudding, and brandy sauce. He bought bags of flour and tins of sardines and bushels of apples and boxes of crackers and sides of beef. He created grapefruit and cantaloupe, and he hired an assistant named Eugene. And so there's Tai Singh. It looks like that's his assistant, Eugene. Now on the trail, Mather told stories that made his guests laugh. He scrambled up steep peaks to show them the best views. He plunged with them into the mountain pools. And he counted on Tai Singh to keep everyone comfortable and well fed. Now, each morning, Tai Singh woke in the shivering dark and he whispered instructions to Eugene and they stacked firewood in the cook stoves and they fed kindling to the trembling flames until the fire burned steady and strong. And they watched the edge of the sky turn rosy while, the, while they cracked dozens and dozens of eggs. 
and as other campers crawled out of their sleeping bags, Tai Sing packed box lunches and put steaks on the on to sizzle. He served breakfast as a yellow as the yellow edge of the sun peaked above the horizon. And after breakfast, the other campers left to hike to the next campsite. But Tai Sing and Eugene, they still had work to do. They heated water on the stove and they washed the breakfast dishes. They opened the oven doors and they stabbed at the ashes to put out the last wisps of the flames. Tai Sing mixed a new batch of sourdough. And then it was time to pack. Tai Sing and Eugene swaddled the china plates and tucked them in a box and strapped the box to a mule. They folded up the long banquet table and when the ovens were cool enough to take apart, they stacked them neatly and tied them to a mule too. But first, Tai Sing snuggled the sourdough box next to the mule's warm hide so the dough would rise during the day and be ready by evening to bake up fresh for dinner. By the time Tai Sing and Eugene trudged off towards the next campsite, the other campers, they were already hours ahead. Wow. So they didn't have cars. They didn't travel by car in the national park areas. And they weren't really national parks yet. It was just wilderness. Tai Sing and Eugene arrived at the next new site just in time to assemble the camp stoves and start to a cook fire for dinner. Now, while the oven heated, they washed the heavy linen tablecloth in the icy snowmelt stream, and they spread it brighter than white water foam over the table. They unpacked the fine china plates and they folded thick cloth napkins to cradle the silverware. And then Tai Sing began to cook. He assembled sardine hors d'oeuvres sliced juicy cantaloupe, and he squeezed lemons to make tart sweet lemonade. He grilled steaks and venison, fried fish and chicken, and he baked sourdough rolls. He served up gourmet meals as fine as any you'd ever find in a San Francisco restaurant. Tai Sing knew how to plan. Look at it. Doesn't that look beautiful? Looks so beautiful. And worked so hard. Now one morning, Tai Sing got a head start on the day by packing his gourmet food before the other campers got up. He strapped it to a mule and then tied the mule in the meadow where it could munch green grass and purple lupine. Lupine is a flower. He dashed back to the stove to fry another egg and dish up more potatoes and finally, the last camper laid down his napkin and Tai Sing and Eugene could start the, the breakfast dishes. And that's when Tai Sing realized that the mule in the meadow had wandered away with all of the fanciest food on its back. Oh, Mather organized the campers to help search and they zigzagged along the river and they crisscrossed the meadow. But that mule had disappeared. Well, Mather finally shrugged and set off on the day's hike. But Tai Sing was so mad, he nearly cried. What a disaster. His carefully planned menus were ruined. All that day, while he plodded past boulders and wound through sagebrush, he cataloged the food he had, he had left and dreamed up new menus. And he changed his plans. Now that night, there were no fancy hors d'oeuvres. The food was plain, but the chicken was moist, the gravy velvety, and those sourdough rolls were so light they almost floated up to join the clouds. And for dessert, Tai Sing baked all-American apple pie. Mather and the other campers sighed happily as they pushed away from the table. They gathered round the blazing campfire and they talked about the stunning scenery they had seen. They told ghost stories. They made plans for convincing Congress to create a National Park Service. Now, after the campers headed off the next day, Tai Sing, 
tied the mule's ropes with extra care. He didn't want another mule wandering away. The trail along Rattlesnake Creek was narrow and steep. Tai Sing stepped carefully, loose rock shifting and crunching underfoot. He took it slow, but one mule drifted too close to the edge. Clatter, clang, crash! The mule tumbled off the trail and down the cliff. Boxes burst and bags flew open. Utensils and food flew through the air. And at the bottom, the mule shook itself and scrambled back up. It was fine. But the food, well, and the gear were not. Nine o'clock that night. Tai Sing stumbled into camp with the battered boxes and bent knives and bruised apples he'd salvaged. His sourdough was lost somewhere in the dusty gravel at the bottom of the cliff. No more rolls as light as clouds. Mather and the other campers had been waiting for hours. They were ravenous. What could Tai Sing feed them? He had to make new plans fast. Well, the food would be simple, but Tai Sing could make sure the setting was elegant. He and Eugene laid china on the linen tablecloth and strung paper lanterns above the table. They strewed those bat stewed those battered apples and baked flat but scrumptious biscuits. And that night, the campers ate the best applesauce they had ever tasted. They ate well. They ate well the entire trip, but Tai Sing dreamed of more than stuffing hungry bellies. Stephen Mather wasn't the only one who loved the mountains. Tai Sing had the Sierra singing in his blood. He too planned to fill the campers with memories. The last night, for the first time, he didn't hover over the cooking pots. They bubbled on the stove while he bent over tiny slips of paper, and he wrote something in English and Chinese. After dinner, Tai Sing served fortune cookies, a handwritten message tucked inside each one. The campers read their fortunes, and they grinned, and they would remember the crackle of the campfire and the slant of the morning sun across the trail. They would remember dining around the linen tablecloth underneath the trees. Long may you search the mountains. Long may you build the paths through the mountains. Where but in the mountains would such a man become a spirit with the mountains? Now in the months that followed, they wrote magazine articles, published books, and made movies about America's national parks. And on August 25th, 1916, exactly one year, one month, and one day after Tai Sing served his fortune cookies, Congress created the National Park Service. On that day, Tai Sing was on the trail, cooking up more mountain magic. Today, if you visit Yosemite National Park, you can hike to Sing Peak. It was named for Tai Sing, a mountain-loving American who knew how to plan. And then, my favorite page, here's a couple pictures of the real Tai Sing. In Yosemite National Park. Isn't that great? And maybe you remember there's the, my one of my very favorite books is um, The Camping Trip That Changed America. And and that also took place at Yosemite National Park. I hope you guys liked that. And there is my bird on loan. It's my peregrine falcon that I have um, checked out from the Field Museum. So, bye everybody.